What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make this portfolio tracker. Now I did have a video very similar to this um, and it did pretty well or it's doing pretty well and you guys are watching it, but huge drop off in retention. So uh, I get it. It's too long, too complex. So I'm going to try to make one that's a lot quicker and easier to follow. I'm going to break it up into two parts. The first part, we're going to be focusing on this, making this right here. And then the second part, which will be another video, then we'll go into how I make my uh, my graphs and then the total returns down here. So let's dive right in. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is make this section right here, symbol, shares, and purchase. Okay? So I'm just going to copy these, control C, and right here, control shift V, just so we can have that. And the very next thing that you're going to want to do is go to your brokerage account and see all the stocks that you have see how many shares you own and then what your purchase price was you don't want your market price you want your purchase price what you originally bought them for okay or your dollar cost average so you're gonna i'm just gonna copy that again just to make the video quicker paste there we go there's all my stocks i only have 14. if you have more that is perfectly fine this list could be 100, right? It could be 200 if you want. Uh, regardless of how many stocks you have, this will work. So once we have all of that, the very next thing we're going to want to do is do market price. Okay, we're going to need market price, cost, market value, dollar gain, growth. Do the PE ratio, the EPS, and the market cap. doesn't necessarily have to be in this order. You could choose whatever order you want. I'm just going to copy the headers and put them in and just make it uniform. Let's do that and that. All right. And we'll actually start to do some coloring here. A little bit of that. White text. Perfect. So now the market cap is the very first thing. It is very easy to do. And to do so, we're going to use Google Finance. So we're going to hit the equals button. You can copy and paste all of this if you want, all right? But it will be equals Google Finance, type that in, hit on that symbol, right? So I'm going to select Apple, which for me is A2. If you're following just like me, sell A2, comma, you want to do quotation marks, price, close quotation marks, close parentheses. Hit enter, it's loading. There it is, Apple is $106 right now. Then you take this, right? So what's great is we don't need to plug that formula in for every single one. This is the beauty about Google Sheets. If you click on this cell and you see the little square right down there, with the, once you move over, the crosshairs happen, hold it down, you can drag it, and now it's going to pull all of the prices from Google Sheets. So there we go. There's all my prices. I'm just going to center it. The next thing is going to be cost. So cost is going to be Another easy formula, there's really no coding, we're not doing anything from Google Finance, but what we are figuring out is, how much did I pay for, say, Apple? If I bought it for 59 cents and I have 16 shares, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to hit equals 16 shares, so B2, multiplied by purchase, C2. Hit enter, that's how much I paid for all of my Apple shares, $952. Then the same thing, click on that, drag it down. Here's what I paid for all of my shares. Let's clean this up. And what we're going to do is bring it down to just the cents. And we are going to center it so everything's nice and uniform. If you want to make these dollars, go for it because that's what it is. We're talking about money here. And we can move right over to market value. Some of you probably already assume what we're going to do here for market value. Now it's going to be our shares times our price. So we go to equals shares, which is B2, multiplied by market price. Hit enter, and there's my, uh, there's my market value of each stock. Scroll down. There we go. Make it center. And perfect. Now we have everything that we need for all of these. And you can see, this is really simple. It's very easy to make yourself a, um, a portfolio tracker. You can highlight all of that. You can make it whatever color you want. I'll just keep it like that. 
And what's great is, let's say you're someone that's adding to all of your stocks, right? So you're going to be buying more stocks. So if we scroll down for all of these, right? So say by the end of the year, I wanted to have 30 stocks. So there we go. We go all the way down to 30. And if I type in, let's say I want to add Verizon to my portfolio. So that's VZ. Say I bought 10 shares for the price of, let's say $50, okay? Hit enter, everything gets logged in for me. Shows how much it cost, what the current price is, and then my market value. It's very simple, so I could continue to add. Say I bought uh, O, which is a REIT. We'll, we'll get into what that is. Let's say 10 shares again. Say I bought it for $45. Everything gets plugged in, so it's easy to maintain. Let's say I add to my position Verizon. I get another 10 shares, so now I have 20, right? You'd have to change the purchase price because now that might be different. Let's say now my dollar cost average is 55, but you get the picture. It's very easy to do all that. Let's just hit back because I don't have those companies, and I don't plan on really buying any more. We're going to move over to dollar gain. This is going to be a little different what we have to do here. This is going to be – we're going to go back to uh, some – middle school math well not so much dollar game but growth right growth we're gonna have to do a little bit of math which some people might not understand but dollar gain very simple we are just subtracting the market value minus the cost what is it worth now what do we pay for it the difference is our profit or loss so if we go back dollar gain hit that equal sign click on the market value cell subtracted by the cost hit enter there we go. I made 700, whoops, made $765 from Apple. Scroll all the way down. Here's all of my prices. I'm gonna highlight this and center it there. Now I could see 700 from Apple, almost 200 from Adobe, 1400 from Etsy. Let's see, four grand from PayPal. I'm in the negative for Microsoft and Intel, not concerned. Now we're gonna move on to growth. So this formula, little different, right? So you just got to stick along what we have here. Just so you can understand what's happening, it's going to be D2 minus C2 divided by C2. So you take in the market price divided by the per, uh, minus the purchase price, and then you want to divide it by your purchase price, and it's pretty much going to turn it into a, um, a percentage, okay? So show what your percentage growth is. So that is equals open parentheses, market price minus purchase price, close parentheses, divided by purchase price. That's how you get your ROI, how you find your return on investment. Take all this, bring it all down, and what we want to do is we want to make it a percentage. There we go. Bring it to the center. Boom. Now we can see I'm up 80% on Apple, or I'm down 10% on Intel. So you know where you lie, right? Like for me, I like to see that Shopify I'm up 166%. Shows all of that. Now, some other things to look at that people like to look at is PE ratio, EPS, market cap. I'm just showing you everything that you can do with Google Finance and all of this data that you're pulling from. So the PE ratio, we're actually going to hold off on and we're going to jump over to EPS and market cap. You'll see why. PE ratio is a little different. But as you can see right here, We'll go back to what I'm making. I'm going to do the equals, right? Google Finance again. Click on that. A2, where our first stock is, comma, open, uh, open quotations, EPS, close quotations, close parentheses. Very straightforward, very easy. There's my PE ratio for Apple. There's my PE ratio for everything. Whoops, we don't want that to PE. That's EPS. So if you screwed up and put in the wrong cell like I did, just hit control X and then put it here, control V. That was for EPS, not the PE ratio. Okay. See, EPS. PE ratio, let's just put the color back. All right. Market cap, again, very straightforward. Equals Google Finance. We're going to select Apple again, comma probably already know where this is going market cap that's the formula right there hit enter loading 
There's Apple's market cap, $1.8 trillion. Put it in dollars as well. Maybe make the cell a little bit bigger so it shows everything. Okay. And drag it down. Highlight all of that and make it center. And also, I mean, you just highlight all of this, hit center. Now everything's centered. Makes it much easier. But we're just about done here. There's a couple more things we have to do. And let's jump back over to here. We have to get PE ratio, which is going to be a little different. And then on top of that, we want dollar gain and dollar growth to have something called conditional formatting. So it'll be these different colors. So it's not like I actually physically plugged in uh, this cell to be red or this cell to be green. What I actually did is there's this way to make it where it will be red or green depending on if you're at a profit or loss. So for example, Apple, my dollar cost average, or Etsy, my dollar cost average is $45.11. Right now, it's currently $111. Obviously, I'm at a profit, so the cell is green. But let's pretend I didn't buy it for $45.11. Let's say I bought it for $145.11. Obviously, that's going to put out a negative. Now, watch this. When I hit enter, these cells would turn red because they're negative. So to me, I love this. It's a great way to keep track. Okay, how many stocks are in the negative? How many stocks are in the positive? So we're going to learn how to do that as well. So let me just switch this back to 45. And let's go back to this. So PE ratio. This is what we have to do. We're going to start the same. Google Finance, right? Now you're going to learn a little bit more about coding here. And for the PE ratio, we're going to want Apple, comma, PE, close, hit enter. Gets our P.E. ratio. Now you think we're done, but here's the only problem. If we scroll down, when you have a stock like, say, Shopify, Shopify P.E.'s ratio is N.A. Because you are dividing it by a negative. Right now its P.E. ratio is garbage. I don't like seeing that N.A. It annoys me. It's an error message. So we want to get rid of that. And as you can see here, I actually have it as a dash. How do I do that? You can see right here, we're using an if error statement, okay? So we have to modify our little code. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back up to here and type in if error, open parentheses, and then go all the way at the end after our close parentheses here, comma, open quotations, dash, close quotations, close parentheses, hit enter, there's the dash. And we want to just scroll up so it changes all of them. So all of them have that if error statement, okay? And we have to scroll down because see how these three do not have it yet? So we just got to scroll down for that. Now they have it. We're almost done with this. Two more things left. Let's first do the conditional formatting. So right here, how do we do that? Highlight it all, okay? Or if you have a lot of stocks, say you have 100, highlight G and H. Right click, go down to conditional formatting, okay? Jump over here, and right now it says, if cell is not empty, make it green. Well, instead we want if greater than zero. So if it's greater than zero, make it green. Click OK. So now we can see all of these are greater than zero. So that's why they're green. These are not greater than zero, so they're not green. Highlight the two cells again, add another rule. Click on that, and we go down to if less than zero, make it red. So we can make it red and hit enter. Throw that on. Uh, we are almost done here. This video is almost done, and then you'll have to take a look at part two to figure out the uh, charts. But the last couple of things I want to do here, or the last thing, highlight all of this. Well, actually, highlight all of the cells like that. So go to A, all the way through K, and then right here, create a filter. Click on that, and now it has these little filters up at the top. So now I can filter, what's my highest uh, growth stock? Go Z to A, because the higher number will be Z, technically. So now I could see, okay, here's highest to lowest. Or maybe I want to see what my highest dollar gain is. Okay, it's PayPal. 
what's my highest market value? Okay, it's PayPal again, right? But other stuff is changing. Then it's Netflix. Or what did I pay the most money for? It's probably going to be PayPal again, which it is. What has the highest market price? Z to A, Shopify. Or maybe you want to go by market cap. You could filter all of this. What has the highest uh, EPS or the highest PE ratio? All this can change. And now you might have a very long list of, say, 100 different stocks. You might be annoyed that all of this is gone. Because what if you don't know what, what cell am I looking at, right? Here's another cool thing. Click on one. Go to view. Go to freeze. Freeze one row. And now that stays up there. So when we go all the way down, you can see we're in the 200s, 300s, right? So you want to copy the S&P 500 and own every single, all 500 companies. This stays here at the top because we froze that section. So there you go. That is part one. You now have all of your stocks, all of your shares, all of your purchase prices. It's going to show the market value, the cost, your market value, the market price, your market value, dollar gain, growth, PE ratio, EPS, and market cap. Now we have everything set for this. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, drop any comments if you have any questions for me, I'll answer them. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to make this chart, how to make this graph, how to do your total return. And what's great is because we have the filter sections, say I do this, everything changes, even the chart and the pie chart, which is really cool. So I could see nice and neatly, here's my highest stock, which is Shopify, all the way down to my lowest or my, my worst performing stock. We now have the first part, which is all of this. Check out my second video. And yeah, I'll see you in that one.